One last typical question in projectile motion problems is finding the launch angle that will maximize the range. Now there's actually two ways of going about this question and we can answer it with equations or we can answer it conceptually and we're going to do both. Now first of all it seems to make sense I mean if you look at the extremes if theta naught is very very small you're not going to go far at all you're just going to be shooting into the dirt basically and if theta naught is really really big well at some point you're almost going to be vertical and you're not going to go very far before you land. So it seems to make sense that there ought to be an angle that maximizes the range. Now the first way to do it is simply by recalling that the range is v naught squared sine 2 theta naught divided by g. Now we derived that in a different video, so if you don't remember where this came from, you can go have a look. But this is the equation of x max, and it depends on theta naught. And in fact, it's maximized when sine of 2 theta naught is equal to 1, because that's the biggest value that the sine function can take on. So this is max when sine 2 theta naught is equal to 1, because all the rest of the time, sine is smaller than 1. So that means that 2 theta naught has to be 90 degrees. Is that 90 degrees? Well, we prefer radians, so let's say pi over 2. So this means that 2 theta naught has to be equal to pi over 2, which means that theta naught has to be equal to pi over 4 radians, which is 45 degrees. Now, there's nothing wrong with degrees in and of themselves. Just be careful with your calculator. If it's in radians, you may use radians. And if it's in degrees, well, use degrees. Um, but for projectile motion, it won't matter so much. There are problems where you absolutely have to use radians, and we'll specify that when we come across them. So here's the first way to do it. And you find 45 degrees, with, which seems to make sense. I mean, if too small is going to not go far because you shoot the dirt, or too big is not going to go far because you go too high and you don't really go anywhere, Somewhere in between, actually in the middle here, 45, ought to give you the maximum range, and that seems to make sense. And that's sort of what the second way of answering the question is based on. It's based on the fact that it's all a trade-off. Now, if I want a lot of v0x to go fast along x, I'm not going to get a lot of v0y, so I'm not going to get a lot of flight time. Conversely, if I want a lot of v0y, so I get a lot of flight time, if I don't have a big v0x, even with a big flight time, I'm not going to get very far. And so we're going to find that 45 degrees conceptually seems to be the best angle for that trade-off, because v0x is equal to v0y when theta naught, sorry, is equal to 45 degrees. So Therefore, x max is maximized when theta naught equals 45 degrees. If you don't like that reasoning, you could also reason it that way. You can say that, well, here's x and here's y. We said that for a given range, there's two ways of getting there. There's shooting low and achieving this range, call it x max, and then there's shooting high and achieving the same range. Okay, And again, it's all about a trade-off with the initial velocity. But what happens is if you pull x max as far as it can go, these two curves eventually superpose. Okay, And they superpose when they have the same launch angle. And we said that this launch angle is theta naught, that the other launch angle is 90 minus theta naught. So they'll superpose and you'll have maximum range when theta naught is equal to 90 minus theta naught. And that's the same as saying that 2 theta naught is equal to 90, which is the same as saying that theta naught has to be 45 degrees. So either use the equation, either argue conceptually that the maximum range is attained when v0x 
equals v0y because that's the best compromise and the trade-off between a lot of horizontal initial velocity and as much as vertical velocity as you can have. 